Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, DwyerSportsBetting.com. Look us up in the sports section on Roku, Dwyer Boxing and Sports News. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Let's talk about Manny Pacquiao post-fight versus Brandon Rios. Now, if there's one thing to focus on in this fight that kind of defines the fight really shows you the difference between the fighters it's their foot speed this is a foot speed fight what I want you to do is to just the next time you watch the video focus on just how much faster Manny Pacquiao is in moving his feet and getting out of the way Right, Pacquiao is able to dole out punishment, then he's able to simply move away. Right? When we talk about foot speed, it's not just the ability to move your feet, it's also your center of gravity. Right? What can you do on the move? Right? Brandon Rios clearly is an in the trenches guy. He needs to be set up, he needs to be ready to dole out punishment. Manny Pacquiao, by contrast, is a guy who can hurt you as he moves around the ring, right? You don't know when he's going to drop that straight left hand. He's a southpaw. The left hand's his dominant hand, right? Pacquiao hits harder than advertised. He hits harder than he comes across on film. Right? You can tell because of the cautiousness of the guys who fight him. They're literally paralyzed. Right, Speed will paralyze you. But a guy will walk through your fast punches if your fast punches don't have power on them. Guys have a hard time walking through Manny Pacquiao's fast punches. In other words, Pacquiao, that straight left is concussive. Right, When you're in the ring... You always have to be aware of Pacquiao's straight left hand. Even if you want to duke it out, like Rios did, you have to be careful with it. Because Pacquiao can get that straight left hand off even as he's moving. Even as the two of you are kind of like jockeying for position. Such as Manny Pacquiao's power, the mobility of it, the foot speed of it, right? Pacquiao's on the move, but yet Pacquiao is still very dangerous. Just the foot speed advantage alone, the fact that Manny Pacquiao is able to get off shots and then before Rios counters, get away from Rios. Just the fact that Manny Pacquiao can also, right? You know, not even counter Rios. He can come in, touch him a couple of times with a right jab, and then drop a straight left, either upstairs or to the body, and then move away. Just Pacquiao's ability to lead leaves Rios in the dust, right? It looks like Rios' only chance in the fight was to corner Manny Pacquiao pin him up against the ropes, take away his mobility, and then turn it into an up-close brawl. Manny Pacquiao won't let him, right? Foot speed and spacing rule the day here. But let's look a little bit more closely at Manny, because as we look at Manny, we're really thinking of other names, aren't we? We're thinking of Manny against Floyd Mayweather. We're thinking about, at least I'm thinking about, Manny against Keith Thurman. We're thinking about Manny against Devin Alexander. Let me just point out, Alexander is a southpaw. Alexander is very fast. Right? These are the kind of elite 147 welterweights that we should be thinking about when we think about Manny Pacquiao, right? He's an elite fighter. You want to think about his contemporaries. 
Here's what I saw in this fight. And keep in mind, they mentioned it during the fight. Brandon Rios had not fought a southpaw for several years. Right? Brandon Rios was ill-equipped, quite frankly, to fight Manny Pacquiao. He didn't figure out the angles, and at the highest levels, I'm telling you, boxing's about angles and timing. Right? Well, let's talk about Manny Pacquiao. In my opinion, he's two different fighters. Up close, Pacquiao is very fast, right? He's one of the fastest fighters in the entire sport. He can also fight low because Pacquiao isn't the tallest guy out there, right? He's short. And Pacquiao knows how to come in and he dips his head from time to time, right? So if you're a taller fighter, Pacquiao, there's a height dynamic. Pacquiao's coming in, but he's coming in around this level, right? So he can fight low. You need to be prepared for that. Now, up close, his game is different than far away. Up close, he can throw a straight, excuse me, a short right hook. Right? He has a right hand up close. He can throw a short right hook. He can throw a nice short left uppercut. You know that long left hand that he uses from distance? Up close, he shortens it and can throw a nice uppercut. Coupled with the speed, it's jarring to a fighter who... Watching Pacquiao from distance has only seen Pacquiao throwing a straight left, right? That short left uppercut is one of the best punches in Manny Pacquiao's arsenal. But from distance, he's a different guy. From distance, he has perhaps his best punch. That long, straight left hand. It's accurate. It's straight. Not a lot of loop in it. It gets there faster than you think. He can throw it to the head, and he can throw it to the body. Let's not take it for granted. Because understand, some guys are head hunters. Manny Pacquiao actually can hit you in the solar plexus and get power on the punch. He still has leverage. He actually thinks to hit you in the body from distance with that left hand. Here's the problem. Manny Pacquiao from distance doesn't have a right hand. From distance, even today, he's a one-handed fighter. Right? Let me also point out that he doesn't have, from distance, a long right hook. The difference between him and, let's say, Roy Jones in his prime, and Roy was a righty, was that from distance, if I were looking at Roy's, you know, right hand, right? You know, let's say I know Roy's a righty, throws a lethal right hand. If I were looking at Roy Jones's right hand and thinking, I've got to watch this, every minute of this fight because I can't let him land that punch. I know he stops guys with that punch. Understand Roy Jones was a great hooker, right? His lead left hook from distance could finish me. So there's a two-handed dynamic there. In fact, while I'm on a roll here, let me talk about a fighter who's uh, getting the worst of it right now with the media. Right? Some days you're popular, some days you're unpopular. Let's talk about Carl Froch for a second. One of the best parts of Carl's game, and to me, Carl is a consummate technician. One of the best parts of Carl's game is the fact that from distance, when he's outside, I know he doesn't have a lot of foot speed, excuse me, a lot of hand speed, but I don't know what Carl Froch is going to throw. Carl Froch has a lethal, he's a righty, he has a lethal left hook that he could throw from the next area code. He has a lethal left uppercut. And by the way, Froch during fights is figuring out what will work. He has a lethal left uppercut. Believe it or not, Carl Froch from distance 
has a great right uppercut. Their fight's where Carl Frotch is way outside. He times it. Drops that left foot, comes in, shifts his weight, and can literally extend on a right uppercut and nail you from distance. And, of course, Carl, of course, has a nice overhand right hand that, that can end fights. In other words, to me, they're complicated fighters from distance. Right? Roy Jones, Carl Frotch, I'm sure you have your list. Manny Pacquiao from distance is uncomplicated. Okay, I know that's going to upset some people, but just understand, from distance, I don't have to worry too much about his right jab. Right? That's a table setter. That's not a Carlos Monzon jab. That's not a Larry Holmes jab. That's not a George Foreman jab. I'm not getting pulverized with the jab where I'm, you know, thinking after a while, why am I worried about anything else? This guy's jab's going to knock me out if I don't do something. Right? Larry, um, Manny Pacquiao's jab is just a feather duster. It's just a, it's just a way to blind you before he comes in with the straight left. Understand, too, from distance, even though Manny throws that straight left up top into the body, I know it's a straight left. So again, if I'm defensively gifted from distance, all I really have to worry about in terms of getting hurt is Manny Pacquiao's straight left. Right? That's it, folks. Right? From distance. Up close, Manny Pacquiao's a problem. Right? But from distance, it's a straight left. Now let's talk about Brandon Rios for a second. Understand, your shoulder should be part of your defensive arsenal. Okay, the idea is my chin, let's just say the other fighter's over here. My chin should be tucked behind my shoulder. Let's talk about the angle even better than that. Let me turn to the side for a second, right? The point is this. If you're in front of me and you're fighting me, I can't have my chin like this. I also can't have my head up, right? Because then you're going to think to yourself, I can throw a straight punch. There's no shoulder in between me and Dwyer's chin. I can throw a straight punch and hit him on the chin. Right? Worse yet, if I don't know what I'm doing with my shoulder, you might be able to throw a hook and hit me on the chin. Or hit me on the temple. Right? So, if I really defensively know what I'm doing, I should be turned a little bit more to the side, and I should have my shoulder up here. Right? That's what I should do. And I should lean back. Right? Now you have no chin to hit, and you've got to reach to find me. Brandon Rios, in my opinion, is too much like this. He's not enough like this. Right? His chin's exposed. He's too square with Manny Pacquiao. That's a recipe for disaster. That's the first thing. Understand, too, Pacquiao's a southpaw. What that means angle-wise is Pacquiao shots are coming in right here. Now, you know Pacquiao isn't going to be throwing left hooks from distance. We don't see that. So his punches are not going to be coming in over here. Right? They're going to be coming in right at this angle. Now, if I'm a defensive master and I know that, guess what? When I turn and I lean... Where are those punches landing? Not only that, if I'm able to defense the punch, then I come back with the right hand. Right? Brandon Rios, again, too open. He's guarding against long right hands that'll never come. He should have just focused from distance on Manny Pacquiao's left hand. Right? Take a look at Pacquiao, Eric Morales. 
right? I felt that Brandon Rios was too open. It's a bad matchup. Let me go one step further. I'm fighting Manny Pacquiao, right? Let's say I'm like this. Let's say Manny Pacquiao starts dancing over to this side. And he starts getting close to me. Now keep in mind, I don't want to deal with Manny up close because then he becomes a two-handed fighter. Then suddenly I have to deal with a right hook. Then suddenly I can't just know that it's going to be a straight left. It might be a left uppercut, right? The punches might actually start to come in bunches since Manny Pacquiao up close becomes a two-handed fighter. So my point is this, when Manny Pacquiao starts to drift over here, also I get inside, Manny Pacquiao scoots away, right? If I have a lead left hook, if I have Roy Jones's left hook, if I have Floyd Mayweather's left hook, you know what, I could actually discourage Manny Pacquiao from moving to my left, right? Because as Manny Pacquiao moves to my left and tries to get closer so he can become a two-handed fighter, I'm hitting him with a left hook, right? This is what, by the way, Emmanuel Stewart fighters do so well. Vladimir Klitschko, Adonis Stevenson, right? These guys have left hooks. In other words, I can't spend 12 rounds just moving away to the left like Manny Pacquiao does in this fight against Brandon Rios. Because a thinking fighter is with mobile power, in other words, the ability to throw punches on the move, because Manny Pacquiao's moving, right? This isn't a fight where we're just standing there and figuring things out. No, I'm dealing with movement the entire fight. A guy who can throw that left hand while the other guy's moving can catch him. Take a look at Floyd Mayweather. Mayweather throws a great left hook up top and down low. Mayweather's a withering body puncher with that left hand. The reason why that's important is Manny Pacquiao fights low at times. So if Manny Pacquiao's over here and he's ducked down, if I can get leverage, on a left hook. Why can't I throw it and hurt Manny Pacquiao on my left side? At least discourage Manny Pacquiao from jetting away to the left side. And of course if Manny Pacquiao decides to dance and go right, let's say he's discouraged from going left. If he starts to go right, then, of course, that lines up with the straight right hand that Floyd threw accurately and repeatedly in the Robert Guerrero fight. Right? I just think that while Manny Pacquiao looked like he moved well in this fight, I didn't see anything in this fight that would lead me to believe that he would beat Floyd Mayweather, right? Understand, again, you know, Manny's faster. We'll call it more talented than Carl Frotch, let's say. Faster feet, faster hands. But understand Carl Frotch, as I said before, has certain skills. He's maximized what he has. So Carl Frotch from distance is complicated. Manny Pacquiao from distance is not complicated. Let me talk about Manny Pacquiao up close. Right? While Manny Pacquiao improves his offense up close, and he does, defensively he's challenged. First, Let's talk about the clinching. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to name rounds so you can take a look at the rounds. I want you to look at the fourth round of the Brandon Rios 
fight. You're going to see the Manny Pacquiao up close while he has more to his game, right? The left uppercut, the short right hook. It allows him to throw combinations up close, right? And, of course, he can get low. You're going to see that he has a problem clinching. He can't slow down the fight. Okay, and I really do believe for fighters, every fighter in their mid-30s, pacing's an issue. You need to have slow rounds, right? You're, the whole fight can't be you jumping around outside. Also, when you come inside, if you're offensively gifted, like Manny Pacquiao, and you're two-handed inside, you don't want to be in a position where the other guy is able to clinch you and slow you down, but you can't reciprocate. So I encourage everyone to look at the fourth round. And while you're at it, look at the eighth round. Manny Pacquiao tries to clinch Brandon Rios. Right now, let's just say Rios, right, who's better than the reports say. Right? I know everyone's saying, oh, this fight was a shutdown and stuff like that. Rios is actually very mentally tough and very savvy. So Rios in the eighth round is up close with Manny. And Rios is slick about it. Right? Rios broadens his body. Right? He doesn't have his hands here where Manny can tie up both of them. No, Rios makes sure, like guys who can fight inside. Right? Rios makes sure his body's broad. So Manny ties him up. But guess what? Rios has a hand free. So Rios starts hitting Manny with that hand. Manny's puzzled. I know on HBO, excuse me, HBO pay-per-view, they say, oh, Manny's letting Rios hit him. Come on, give me a break. No, Manny's getting hit by Rios. Manny has tried to tie up Rios can't do it, right? Rios' hand is free for a while. That's the story of that eighth round. Rios actually lands a few shots on Manny Pacquiao. What you need to think about, and I know I'm blurring weight here, right? And I'm doing that deliberately. What you need to think about is what would happen if Rios faced the fighter, not Rios, Pacquiao faced the fighter, who was mobile, who inside knew to broaden his body, could actually fight inside and could tie up Manny Pacquiao. What if Pacquiao were to fight a complicated fighter like Andre Ward? That'd lead to all kind of trouble for him, right? Because Ward's mobile, and inside Ward would know, outside Ward would know Okay, I got to worry about Manny's straight left hand, right? Ward would always know Manny's balance from distance because Manny's just loading up on that left hand from distance. So Ward would know exactly how Manny's balanced. Keep in mind, for guys who move, that's crucial. You're moving around the ring. If you know where the other guy's leaning, you know exactly how he's balanced. By the way, take a look. In terms of movement, at Floyd against Robert Guerrero. Floyd's moving throughout the fight. By the way, Robert Guerrero, like Manny Pacquiao, is a southpaw. Let me just say, too, Robert Guerrero hits hard. Don't underestimate the ghost's power. Never a factor in that fight. Right? Floyd's moving around the ring. He knows where Guerrero's power is. And Andre Ward against Manny Pacquiao would be moving around the ring from distance he would know exactly what to expect from Manny Pacquiao from distance, just like he knew exactly what to expect from Mikel Kessler from distance. And I'm just here to tell you, there's a moment in Ward Kessler where Ward just decides, I'm going to come inside. Right? You know, Ward is mixing it up. And when he comes inside, I'm just here to tell you, the guys who know how to fight inside, they know how to clinch you. They know how to not get clinched. Right? They know how to hurt you. They, they are watching which way you move. Right? If he moves to my left, left hook. He moves to my right, 
I could throw a right hook. I could throw a straight right hand. Right? All I'm saying is Manny Pacquiao superior athlete. But there's a predictability to his game that I think would make him vulnerable to some of the fighters at 147. I want you to look hard at Keith Thurman. Look at uh, Thurman's fight against John Zafik. You know, I know Thurman calls himself one touch or one time or something like that. And I know Thurman has devastating body, excuse me, devastating power. Right? In both hands. But as you're looking at the Zavik fight, I want you to see how Thurman's actually mobile. He's actually moving in that fight. Believe your eyes. He's moving in that fight. And so you have to ask yourself, wow, if, unlike Rios, Pacquiao is fighting a guy with mobile power, who actually from distance is two-handed. What happens? I think the answer is hazy. So Manny Pacquiao is back. He looked a lot better in this fight than he has recently. He is back. But before he left, how complicated a fighter was he from distance? Let me make one final point, and I'm overdoing it again time-wise here. Brandon Rios comes forward. He's front foot. The guys who give Manny Pacquiao a hard time, aren't they the guys like Marquez, who can fight you back foot, who can set traps for Manny Pacquiao? Right? The Marquez fights. Wouldn't they give a guy who's defensively gifted and can fight on his back foot a bit of a blueprint on how to slow down Manny Pacquiao? Didn't this Manny Pacquiao in the Rios fight look a lot faster than you recall him in the third and fourth Marquez fights? Why is that? Right? As I said earlier, you know, aren't there too many Pacquiao's? Isn't the Manny Pacquiao from distance one you could actually prepare for? To the boxing fans here online, let me just ask the question. And I'm aware that Pacquiao stopped Ricky Hatton with a short right hook. But from distance, not short, but from distance, from long, what does Manny Pacquiao throw other than that straight left hand? Let me hear from you. Let me also ask too. From distance, isn't it a straight left? Let's just think of the angle. Isn't it a straight left? Do I have to worry about a left hook from Manny Pacquiao from distance. Let me hear from you. I thought Pacquiao looked good. No question about it. I thought Rios matched up well with him. I thought this fight came down to a foot speed disadvantage for Brandon Rios. Aren't there guys out there with faster feet at 147 than Brandon Rios? What happens then? In fact, let me broaden the conversation. You know, I've looked at Kell Brook a bit, right? Kell Brook is two-handed. Kell Brook throws very short punches. Kell Brook also moves around the ring well. Where Kell Brook has problems is with a pressure fighter. Think that first Carson Jones fight where a guy's able to come up and smother him. Two questions. Is that Manny Pacquiao's game? And the second is, if Manny Pacquiao is outside, where he's less complicated, isn't that where Kell Brook would want him? 
Let me hear from you. Thanks for stopping by.